Today's uh, Thursday, May 26, 2022, and we're again talking about judgment, judging, judging condemningly, and that we're not to do that. And we're reading out of Matthew 7, 1 through 7. Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye? And look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you'll see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. So I want to digress a bit today just because I think we need to grasp a little broader picture of this. No way crossing the line. You're not to judge condemningly. But when are we to judge? Are we not to judge? And the judging we're talking about here is the judging that calls into question, determines a situation, esteems and discerns according to to a series of scriptures I'm going to give you right now. In other words, every believer needs to be discerning. And sometimes when you discern wrong, you start judging. But the intent of the Spirit of God to give you discernment because you've saturated your soul and mind and spirit with scripture and you see, wow, that's wrong. That can't be right. That doesn't please God. Then you don't go into condemning, judging others, but that discernment then helps you help them call into question where they've missed what God's teaching. Luke 12, 57, yes, and why even of yourselves do you not judge what is right? Think about it. <clears throat> why don't you judge what's right? Why don't you say this is right, that's wrong? John 7, 24, do not judge according to appearance, but judge, here we go, with righteous judgment. Now, this can't mean judge condemningly with righteous judgment. We don't have that power and authority. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. In other words, in our world, it's becoming easier and easier to see that's not right. That doesn't line up with anything that God teaches in his word. That's, that's not only antichrist in its very existence, it's morally wrong to anybody who's got common sense. 1 Corinthians 5, 12. For what have I to do with judging those who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? So in the body of Christ, if your brother's overtaken in a fault, you would your spiritual go to your brother with humility and show him that you may bring one back from the error of his way. We're not to let that slide. In this country, particularly in this day and age, things become habitual. They become addictive to us. Sin is very addictive. Promiscuity is addictive. Drugs are addictive. We got to show people we got to judge. That's not right. We have to be in that place where we help them. And if we don't, we're doing what the scripture says. We're giving what's holy to dogs. We're casting our pearls before swine. And all they're going to do is trample them in the, in the sludge down below and, and then turn and tear you in pieces. And by the way, when you deal with people who are not willing to turn from their wickedness, we pray for them, we show them, we humbly plead with them, stop, this is not the way of God. Look at, here's the scripture, it's plain as day. And, and invariably, if they're not ready to be corrected and they don't wanna follow after Jesus, what will happen is they'll turn on you. They'll turn on you. They'll become your worst enemy, not because you did something wrong, you did it according to a biblical pattern. That's why, very careful, very careful, we don't give what's holy to dogs. We don't cast pearls before swine. First Timothy 5.20. Those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all that the rest may also fear. 
Oh, huh. And I'll tell you, this works so well in a small group of people who are committed to be followers of Jesus Christ. It's tougher in a large body, but I don't think excuse it from happening. A leadership falls, they need to be corrected, rebuked in front of everyone. Sin needs to be rebuked. Sin needs to be repented of. And so how can you call something sin if you don't discern this is not right? And that's a judgment. That's a judgment, but it's based upon the word of God. In other words, don't cast your pearls before swine and don't give what's holy to dogs. First Corinthians 6, 1 through 4. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints? Do you know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world be, will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? <laughs> How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are at least esteemed by the church to judge? In other words, Paul's saying that's the way it ought to be done because they don't have any markers in the game. They're not going to win or lose by being correct. So we judge within the body of Christ. We correct, we select, we, we discern this is not right, this is not the pattern, this is not the way to go. Hmm. Not judging condemningly. In other words, you're not going to hell. You're not going to hell, but brother and sister, if you continue this pattern, you're rejecting the Holy Spirit's correction and the discernment of all the brothers and sisters around you. There's another one. 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. In verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So the word of God is to be used for reproof, now, that would definitely be called judging by many for correction. A lot of people call that judging, but it's not the judgment of Matthew 7, 1. That's judging condemningly. A correction and a, rebru a reproof, excuse me, and an instruction in righteousness is healthy and profitable for the body of Christ. Now, the ones I've just given you today, there are only a few scriptures that teach us to, to judge, not condemningly or judicially, but correctively so souls can be spared. This judging is a form of discipline and chastisement that God's given to the body of Christ, much like the judging responsibility God's given to parents. So I hope that brings some clarity and understanding. I think it's powerful stuff. So you, you and I should just keep searching the word of God so we understand, wow, we need to be discerning. We need to help our brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh Lord, right now, help us, help me. I don't want my brother to slip while I'm standing on the sidelines doing nothing. And I don't want my sister to fall into the mire because I didn't do anything to prevent it. I sure don't want my children to go crossways because I didn't do the due diligence of chastising them, instructing them, reproving them, and correcting them as they grew up. Oh, Lord, we confess we need your help. We make a mess of a lot of things, but you're the God who comes in. You clean the slate for us and you restore life to us and give us hope. And I'm praying that if someone was listening today and they, they already been condemned, they all they felt is condemnation. Arms are open today. The arms of the living God are open today to receive them as they turn from where they've been and repent and come freely just as they are to the throne of mercy and grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, praise God. And I hope we got some more clarity about judging now as we're going to finish up tomorrow. Have a great day.